Well, earlier this week, international news outlets reported that Syrian-American blogger Amina Abdullah Arif was allegedly kidnapped by Syrian security forces. You might remember this story. That would add her name to those who've been detained by Syrian security forces since the beginning of protests earlier this year. Amina's kidnapping was noted by her cousin on Amina's, Amina's popular blog, A Gay Girl in Damascus, featuring posts about the Middle East uprisings and what it's like to be gay in Syria. But the Amina disappearance has been the subject of controversy this week. While some are calling for an inv- investigation into her kidnapping, others are questioning whether Amina is actually real. My next guest has been researching the details of Am- Amina's story. Andy Carvin is a senior strategist for NPR's social media desk, and he joins me on the line from Washington, D.C. Hello, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. So, first off, can you describe why Amina's blog, A Gay Girl in Damascus, caught the attention of the international community, including news outlets? Well, I think people were attracted to the story she had to tell. This was an openly gay woman who spoke uh, and wrote in beautiful, fluent English and had an amazing story to tell as this regime uh, found itself uh, getting uh, protests from all over the country. So to have her telling her personal story while all this chaos is going on around her just became very compelling for a lot of people, including a lot of news outlets. So she's been kidnapped by Syrian forces, or I guess now allegedly so. How did you get involved in the story of her disappearance and in the question of whether or not Amina is a real person in the situation she describes? Well, not long after it was reported that she had been kidnapped, I started receiving um, messages from Syrian contacts of mine, all expressing some skepticism. Uh, two of them basically said uh, this, her stories seem outlandish sometimes. For example, there was one story that talked about her father essentially rescuing her from security forces uh, by shaming them uh, to leave the house. And, um, and Syrians, and, and many Syrians since then, have said to me, under no circumstances would security guys just leave. If, if state security wants to arrest you, they're going to take you away no matter what. Uh, and then another person I talked to who has some connections in the local gay community said that he couldn't find any people uh, who had uh, had met her in person either. So I just simply asked a couple of questions online. I wasn't necessarily trying to debunk her or anything. I just wanted to learn more about her. Mm-hmm. And so I asked on Twitter a couple of days ago, has anyone talked to her in person? And I've got a fairly large Twitter following from the Middle East, and um, no one said that. I couldn't find anyone who said yes. Right. And then I asked, well, have any of you um, talked to anyone who claims they've talked to her, at least, you know, secondhand? And a number of people pointed to a woman in Canada who was very close friends with her. And um, many, many people said, yeah, this is the person you need to talk to. She knows her the best. And uh, so we talked to her, as, as did another, a lot of other news outlets subsequently. And uh, she told us that uh, she had known Amina for six months, but there their relationship was strictly by email and text. And in fact, the one time that Amina invited her to call her over the phone, um, all she, it just kept ringing and ringing. And Amina said, oh, she wasn't able to get it for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, since then, we've called that phone number, and it turns out to be a pharmacy. And um, no one at that pharmacy had ever heard of her. So uh, I've been following you on Twitter, and, and, and you've, you wrote on Twitter recently that you're not actually saying definitively that this is a hoax or that Amina doesn't exist. And, and the stakes are high here. One, one of your concerns is that this discussion of her identity could distract people from the potential that she does exist and is in detention. Can you discuss this Catch-22? Well, I, it, it, my sense is that the person or the persona that is Amina, they've been online for a very, very long time. We've been able to trace the writings back over five years and uh, has a a long paper trail across numerous social networking sites and they all seem to be fairly consistent which either suggests she does exist and this is we're just all misunderstanding this or this is a person who has been writing under a pen name uh, and does happen to be a uh, a lesbian woman in the Middle East and she's doing it to protect herself and so essentially she's under deep cover or maybe it's the possibility that this is a a person who's in the closet and is using the um, Amina persona to express the world she wished she could inhabit. So 
there are all sorts of ways. Some people have suggested this could be a, a Syrian intel operation or Israeli intel. So everyone's got their own pet theory on this. But uh, And I'm always happy to talk about the theories, but I think no matter which ones we decide to focus on at any given moment, we need to remember that there's still a possibility that somewhere in a Syrian detention center sits a woman who was writing this blog. Well, it doesn't, a, doesn't matter if her name is Amina. It doesn't matter right. if much of what she wrote was fiction, but she still might exist and still might have been arrested. I mean, it's a fascinating story. You know, it's sort of almost mind-bending because uh, on the one hand, activists are calling for an in investigation of where Amina is, and then others are calling for an investigation of whether she exists, right? Uh, the Internet and social media in particular have become important tools during the uprising and conflicts for citizens inside, journalists outside. Um, what questions does this story raise for journalism in this era of online information, do you think? I don't really see this as much of a social media story. Um, I see this more as um, media organizations really eager to find a source in Syria who is compelling and interesting. And here was this woman who was writing compelling and interesting things with a huge fan base that she was interacting with. Um, as I contacted news outlets that had interviewed her, I discovered that every single one that I've talked to only did it via email. One of them, The Guardian in the UK, had planned to meet her in person in Damascus, but uh, she didn't show up. She later said that security forces had been following her. But interestingly, before uh, that meeting was supposed to take place, she supplied the reporter with a photo saying, this is what I look like. And it turns out this photo is of a Croatian woman who lives in mm. the UK, uh, Jelena Lecic. And uh, as we've discovered since this all unraveled,